Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I am going to show you how to dual boot Windows and Zorin OS. And this will work for Windows 10 or 11, although I will be using Windows 11. Zorin OS is the perfect Linux distribution for people who have never used Linux before. And all you require for following along with this video is a blank USB drive and a computer running either Windows 10 or Windows 11. You should back up your computer before you start, just in case you make a mistake. To get started, open a web browser and head over to zorin.com forward slash os forward slash download. There is a pro edition available for £47.99, pence, but there is also a free edition called Zorin OS Core. Click on the download link for Zorin OS Core. You can either subscribe and download, or you can do what I do and click the skip to download option. We now need a tool for creating a bootable USB drive. The tool we are using today is Balina Etcher. So open another browser tab and type etcher.io. Click on the download Etcher button and then click on the download link next to Etcher for Windows. When both files have downloaded, you can close the web browser and then double click on the Windows Explorer icon. Insert a blank USB drive. If you insert a USB drive that has data on it, then the data will be wiped as part of this process. Navigate to the Downloads folder and double click on the Belina Etcher file. It can take a few seconds to open, but you can minimize the Windows Explorer folder whilst this is taking place. When you see the Belina Etcher screen pop up, click on the Flash from File button and navigate to your Downloads folder. Choose the Zorin OS ISO that you downloaded previously and click Open. Now click Select Target and place a tick in the box next to your USB drive and click Select. Finally, click the Flash button. A warning will appear asking whether you are sure. Choose Yes. Etcher will burn the Zorin ISO image to the USB drive and the processing can take around 15 to 20 minutes. Whilst that is taking place, we need to make room for Zorin on our hard drive. Press the start button and type discmgmt.msc and press return. Note that all commands and URLs will be in the video description. I am going for a one disk solution whereby Windows and Zorin reside on the same drive. To do this I find the Windows partition and this is usually called the C drive but it's probably the largest partition on your drive and will have an NTFS partition. Right click and choose shrink volume. A window will appear and you can enter how many megabytes you want to use for Zorin. In my case I am going to type 200,000 which is 200 gigabytes. What you will choose will be dependent on your disk size. Never go higher than the original amount that was in the box and leave space for windows to continue working. Zorin can run in as little as 30 gigabytes. Press the shrink button to continue. You will now see that there is an area of unallocated space on the drive and you can close this window now. Flip back to the Etcher window and wait for it to show flash completed. At this point you can close Etcher and reboot your computer. You will however need to know which function key is used to bring up the boot menu and this differs by make and model of PC. If you are unsure go into Google and type in the make and model of your PC and ask for the boot key. Reboot your PC and press the boot key as I have done here. Then choose your USB drive. Your menu will probably not be quite as messy as mine is. Now click on Try or Install Zorin OS. Zorin will now check the validity of your USB drive. In theory you can cancel this by pressing Ctrl and C, but I have had little luck in doing so. It doesn't take too long however. Zorin will boot to this screen and you can either choose Try Zorin or Install Zorin. I am going to choose Try Zorin so I can clearly record the screen. The live version of Zorin works the same as the installed version and you can connect to the internet and use the applications but anything you install will be wiped when you reboot. To install Zorin, double click on the icon in the top left corner. A welcome screen will appear and you just need to choose your language from the list and click continue. Now choose your keyboard language and layout from the list provided and click continue again. The next screen asks whether you want to download updates as you install and whether you want to include third party software. I recommend leaving these checked and clicking continue. At the installation type screen you will see options to install Zorin alongside Windows, erase disk and install Zorin, or something else. I actually choose the something else option as it gives you the full control of the process. 
Click continue. Scroll down until you see the large section of free space. Select it and click on the plus icon. I am going to create one large partition for Zorin and a small partition for swap space. My swap is going to be about 8GB, so I enter the full amount of space minus 8000 megabytes. In the mount point, select the forward slash and click OK. Find the remaining free space and click the plus icon again. This time select the user's drop down and choose swap area and click OK. In the device for bootloader installation, you need to choose the drive that has the EFI bootloader. Look down the list of partitions and you'll see one with type set to EFI and the system will say Windows Boot Manager. Select that as the device in the bottom drop down. Click install now. A warning will appear telling you what you have chosen and so you should check the details and make sure that this is what you want to do. If you are unsure then click go back. At this point nothing has been installed. If you want to continue however, click continue. A map will appear and it will probably already have selected your location on it, but if it has the wrong one, click on the time zone that is closest to you and click continue. Finally, you just need to create a user. Enter your name, a name for your computer, a username and a password you want to use. Then confirm the password in the box provided. You can choose to log in automatically, but I recommend the require my password to log in option as it is more secure. Click continue. Zorin will now start to install and it can take about 20 minutes to do so. When the process is complete, you are given the option to continue testing or restart now. Click the restart now option and your computer will reboot. At the point it starts to boot, remove the USB drive. When the menu appears, click on Zorin and when the login appears, click on your username and enter the password. Zorin should now be installed and working and you will see this welcome screen. And that is the end of the video. If you liked it, click that like button. If you want more Zorin content, click the subscribe button. Check out the video description for links and notes. And note that there is a Facebook group where you can discuss the content of the videos if you so wish. But for now, that is it. Thank you for watching. Everyday Linux user.